Now the point estimate is the center of our confidence interval. So if we find the average of the limits of our confidence interval, we'll have the point estimate. It turns out it's 0.4. And we can interpret this as 40% of the ratings in the representative sample were five stars. Now every confidence interval is a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error. So if we just take our upper limit of our confidence interval and subtract out the 0.4, we can see that the margin of error is 0.1537. Now for this type of confidence interval, margin of error equals z star, our critical value, times the square root of p hat q hat over n. Now p hat's just our point estimate, 0.4, and q hat is its complement, 1 minus 0.4, so it's 0.6. So we know what these two values are, let's calculate what z star is. z star is the number of standard deviations you need to go from the middle of the normal distribution to isolate the middle 98%. So if I stamp a normal distribution and I label the middle 98%, in each of these tails we have 1%. We can use a function on our calculator called inverse norm. The way inverse norm works is you have to tell it what area to the left of the cutoff value you have. So we have our middle 98% plus the 1% in the left tail, so we're going to use inverse norm 0.99 to figure out what this upper cutoff z star is. To do this on the calculator, press second vars and go down to inverse norm. Type in our area 0.99 and you can leave the mean and standard deviation as 0 and 1. All right, our z star is about 2.326. All right, now let's do some algebra. So we know our margin of error equals 0.1537, and we just calculated our z star is about 2.326. We know what p hat and q hat are, 0.4 and 0.6, and the only thing we're missing is n. So if we just solve this equation for n, we'll know the sample size. Let's start by dividing both sides by 2.326. That leaves us with about 0 0.0661 equals the square root of 0.24 over n. So I went ahead and multiplied the 0.4 and 0.6 in the numerator. Now if we square both sides, we get 0 0.0044 equals 0.24 over n. Now let's multiply both sides by n. And our last step is just divide both sides by this coefficient, 0 0.0044. And we end up with n is about 54.5. Now we did a lot of rounding in this problem, so let's go ahead and round this value up to 55. So the representative sample size was 55. Let's use the four step solving process for part C. For our state step, we wish to construct a 98% confidence interval for the true improvement in the proportion of five-star ratings since implementing his have a great day strategy. For the plan step, if conditions are met, we will use a two-sample Z interval for the difference in population proportion. In this case, the proportion of five-star ratings he had after implementing his strategy and the proportion he had before implementing it. The reason I chose proportion 1 to be after implementing have a great day is because it's greater and when we do the subtraction we'll be left with a positive difference. That will be easier to interpret. Now since the data come from random samples of ratings before and after is have a great day strategy, the random condition is met. For the independent condition, we have two independent random samples, before and after have a great day. Since we are sampling without replacement, however, we must assume he had at least 550 ratings before Have a Great Day and 450 ratings after Have a Great Day for the 10% condition to be met. Now for the normal condition, we have to check that he had at least 10 5-star ratings in each sample and at least 10 non-5-star ratings in each sample. So to do this, we have to figure out the point estimate for his post Have a Great Day strategy sample. Since his interval was 0.5283 to 0.8494, we can do what we did in part A and just find the middle of it. It turns out it's 0.68885, so he must have had 31 five-star ratings in his sample. That means he had 14 non-five-star ratings in that sample. Now he took a sample of 55 ratings before his have a great day strategy, and if we multiply that by the point estimate, we know he got 22 5-star ratings and 31 non-5-star ratings. 
So since all these values are at least 10, we can use normal calculations. Now we're going to do the do step on the calculator. If you press stat and you go over to test, option B on this calculator is 2 prop Z interval. Now for X1, we're going to put the 31 five star ratings he got in a sample that was post his have a great day strategy. And that sample size was 45. In his first sample, he had 22 five star ratings out of a total of 55 samples. And we want to calculate a 98% confidence interval. So if we go down to calculate and press enter, here we go. We can see that the output gives us our P hat for our post have a great day strategy and for our pre have a great day strategy samples. Here's our two sample size. And on top is our confidence interval that estimates the difference between population proportion one and population proportion two. That is the true improvement in his five star rating proportion after implementing the have a great day strategy. So in the do step, let's write down what we input and what it gave as an output. So let's conclude. We are 98% confident that the true improvement in the proportion of five star ratings since implementing his have a great day strategy is between 0 0.06665 and 0 0.51113. Since zero is not contained in this interval, we have significant evidence that he actually improved. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got a hundred problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.